Welcome to today's webinar, Year in Closing in Dynamics NAV and Business Central, brought to you by Archer Point. As the end of the year approaches, accounting departments across the country start preparing everything that needs to happen to close out the current year smoothly and make sure next year is set up to start out on the right foot. If you're using Dynamics NAV or Business Central and are concerned about year in closing, today's webinar is for you. Our presenter today is Roger Olmstead. Roger has been an auditor, controller, and support consultant, and has been helping Archer Point clients get the most out of Dynamics and AV and Business Central for an impressive 16 years. Roger will show you how to perform your year in closing today. So let's get started. Roger, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. We're going to work on closing the year today. Before we start, a few things. We're going to assume, for the most part, that your year entries are made, your balances are verified, you've reconciled your accounts, et cetera. Before you can close the year, you should create the new year for the upcoming period, uh, if you haven't already done so. And then we're going to go and cover the actual year-end process. Once we do the year-end process, we'll close, we'll post the closing entry. Uh, that entry will verify the balances, the retained earning account, that it makes sense, everything looks good, and that is all there is to really closing the entry or for the year. We're using uh, a BC database here. So first, we'll take a quick look at the chart of accounts to see what we've got. And I've currently got this filtered for 2021. So when we come down here, we can see that we've got all of our accounts here and they do have balances in them. Keep in mind, when you close the year end, it's only going to close income statement accounts. It's going to ignore balance sheet accounts. So all of your income expense accounts should show income statement in this income balance column here. That's one thing you can double check and verify before you go and close the year is that these are all income statement and that none of your balance sheet are marked as income statement. It does occasionally happen, especially if you've added something during the year. So we're going to assume everything looks good here. We're happy with our balances, so we can go ahead and close the year. Keep in mind, too, that if you close the year, let's say, on the 1st of January, and then you make entries later, you can always reclose the year. The closing process is a cumulative process, or a differential process, I should say. So whatever has changed since the last time is what it will close when it recloses. You could do it January 1st if you want to, just to where you're not looking at balances here. And then when you get the audit numbers, you can close it again. The first thing we need to do is to look at our accounting periods. So we'll go to the accounting periods. And we can see we've got 2019 and 2020 here, and they are marked as closed. But 2021 is not closed. So we will need to close that year. All that closing does is it puts a check mark into this closed box, as you can see right here for 2020. That is literally all that the system does when it closes the period. Once there's a check mark in that box, when it creates an entry into the general ledger journals, it will mark that entry as a prior year entry. It's a Boolean on the general ledger entries table. And so you can search on that if you want to see entries that were made after you close the year for some reason you need to go back and take a look at that. As usual, the way that you prevent posting in the prior period is through your either the user setup or the general journal setup. So as you probably know on the user setup, you can go in here and put in an ID and allow posting from or to. This thing takes precedence over the general ledger setup which is where most people will generally put it. So you have a posting from and to here as well. So you can use this to prevent posting back in the prior year. So we'll go ahead and close 2021. So that it will be under actions close year asking us if we want to close the year for 2021 from 1 1 21 to 12 31 21 it says here once it's closed it can't be opened again 
and the periods in the fiscal year cannot be changed, as I say, that's okay. The only thing that this really changes is it literally just puts a check mark in that box. That's it. You didn't see it do anything else, created no journal entries or anything like that. That's a process that we'll have to do ourselves. So the next thing after you do that is we'll go into the closed income statement. This is a report and we'll pull it up. We can see that the year it's going to close is as of 12 31 21. We're going to put it into a general journal and we're going to put it into its own little batch here. Uh, that's in case we we don't want it to get mixed up with anything else. I like to put in a document number that has a year end on it. You can, of course, do whatever is the normal process for your company and procedure. So I'm going to say year end close 2021 12 31. And then I also like to put a description down here in the description as to what the what we're doing here. The other whoops, question that we have is on dimensions. A lot of people say, do we want to close by dimensions? And the answer is, yeah, it depends. If you're not sure, if you're in doubt, I would say the answer is yes, close by dimensions. So you can click on these ellipses here and pull up the list and check whatever dimension or dimensions you want to close by. Keep in mind, if you have in your general ledger that certain accounts have to have dimensions on them in order to post or require certain dimensions, then you'll certainly need to post by dimension. It's also common that during the year you may change the rules for dimensions on certain things. And if you run into that, you may have to temporarily go into the dimension settings on the chart of accounts, change them long enough to close the year, and then put them back how they were. So when I say OK here, it's going to create an entry. And we'll go look at the general journal that it created. And you can see here that it created this general journal. It's got a C date over here. And what the C date means is all your entries in the year are with a date. And the C stands for the very last possible second of the last hour of the last day. So this is the last entry that can be made, so to speak, for that year. Um, it also allows you to exclude these entries from reports and other things if you need to or if you want to. And it also makes it easy to identify the closing entries that are created. You can see down here, I didn't mention it, but we have the retained earnings account. When we went and generated the close entry here, one of the things we put in there was the retained earnings account. If you have one account, that works out really great. If it turns out that you have two accounts, let's say you're a partnership and you need to split this between the two accounts, then you could put it to the one and then in the journal, go in and manually change how you want that split. So you could come down here to this line and make the appropriate entries on the retained earnings here. You'll also notice that we have the departments here or the uh, dimensions, this one being sales and large. So it's going to close this account 40,100 into a sales and large group and then the sales and medium for it and then sales and small and so forth and so on down here. So if we go ahead and post this entry, we can now go look at our chart of accounts. And you can see that except for these two odd accounts here, everything is closed out for the year. If we click on the balance here, and let's take out this account right here real quick, where we don't have an account. We can see that we do have income and expense accounts in here, 50,001. So if we go and look at 50,001 account, 50,100 I should say, You've got all of these entries for 2021, and then all the way up here at the top. Did I pick one of the ones that didn't close for some reason? I did not. Oh, I did. I picked one of the ones that for some reason did not close. 
So, or maybe it did, and I need to put my entry here. Okay, it did. So we go in here, and you can see the closing entries here by dimensions. And as I said, if you do make it another journal entry, I'll show you where that thing is. If you zoom the record over here, you can come over here and see the prior year entry right there, this Boolean field. It's marked no, but if I made an entry for 1231 or for the year 2021, the entry that I made for that would be marked with the yes here. So I would know that that entry was created after the accounting period was closed. One last thing to keep in mind when we run reports is some reports like the trial balance detail will allow you to include or exclude closing entries when you run them. So I like to tell people whenever you run a report, always look over the options and make sure that what you're putting in there makes sense. So if you wanted to include closing entries, you could click that right there and it would show you your closing entries when you ran your trial balance detail for your auditors. As I said, you can reclose. So if we did do a journal entry here, we'll pick the other journal. So if we put in an entry here as of 060121, for $123 and we'll put the balance into uh, somewhere on the, uh, we'll put it to petty cash. Okay, so when we go back and we close income statement again, same thing here, we'll call this number two, just to differentiate it. We'll say okay, and when we go back to our general journal and take a look at that year end entry, we should have a line here for that change that we did, the $123 difference that we had, and when we post that, obviously we'll have closed the year again. So that is in a nutshell, closing a year. We do have some blogs and some other resources you can look at on how to close a year. We'll be sending you the links to these, uh, some standard practice you might wanna do as far as how you close a year. Keep in mind, you can also reverse the journal entry to close the year if you want to for some reason. So you can look at these and then finally, just some things to keep in mind for the year end. If you have Serenic payroll, uh, be sure and give us a holler if you want to get that updated. The new payroll rates are due to come out later this week or early next week. We can start working on getting them into your system so that we're not rushing for your first payroll in January. And if you use Lanham UPS, uh, be sure to give us a holler at support at archerpoint.com telling us what states you shipped from and we will send you the appropriate rate files and instructions on how to upload those. So if there are any questions, let us know, and thank you. Thank you, Roger. Archer Point would love to help you make sure you're in closing as a non-event. The links Roger shared, as he mentioned, will be supplied in your follow-up email, and you can contact us at info at archerpoint.com to get started should you require additional assistance. Thank you everyone for your time today. And that concludes today's session. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching this Archer Point video. If you found it helpful, make sure to check out our website and blog at www.archerpoint.com. Additionally, if you have any questions regarding our products, services, or information in this video, feel free to email us at info at archerpoint.com. Thanks.